Hey everyone, this is Troy with DDM's Realm, and I've got a new video for you. Today we are going to tackle Tomb of the Nine Gods. If you haven't already, throw me a subscribe, become a patron, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I really appreciate all your help. All right, make sure you're buffed up, have the right uh, pets out, and then come on in here. I'm going to speed up some of the fighting here so you can see what we're going to do. This first section is actually the very first puzzle you're going to run into, and you're going to want to keep an eye on which one of these passages has this face on the side of the wall here. That's going to dictate the right passage to go down, so you don't have to fight a bunch of stuff. If you go down the wrong passageway, you're going to have to kill everything and then go back to the next one. Once you take the right passageway down, you will move into the next section of the quest. Congratulations! You may yet be worthy of dying in my tomb. All right, here we come into this next section. That's a big kind of like a mausoleum area. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is look at the floor here and see what symbols are on the floor. And that'll tell you which of these uh, casket things that you need to click on. If you click on the wrong one, if you see this symbol is not the same as the floor, you will get like a little mini boss thing that spawns. Many adventurers get tripped up by that symbol puzzle. I'm glad you're proving to be worth my time and attention. If you're not really tough, you may want to make sure you stick with the group in here because there are mobs wandering around and they will aggro and can get you dead. Um, but if you can, go ahead and get up there, click on the right sarcophagus, and you can uh, help the team move to the next section. Once everything is uh, kind of cleared out and everything's clicked, you'll go through the door in the back of the mausoleum. All right, now you're going to run into these freaky dudes that uh, will immobilize one person in your group that probably should be like a tank or something that can handle tons of damage. Make sure you keep them healed while you take out the dudes at the side. Otherwise, they will pretty easily and quickly die. Ah, magnificent, isn't it? Centuries have allowed me to perfect my tool. Enhance its mechanisms, strengthen its occupants, you know, add to its treasures. How far do you think you'll make it before you yearn for the sweet relief of death? This is one I would definitely suggest you increase your movement on. As you see, this character is super slow and you'll lag behind the entire group as you do this. Okay, here is the first of three random puzzles that's going to spawn before you get to the bosses. Let's take a break and talk about these different puzzles. Okay, in the Mimic puzzle so what you're going to do is play the shell game so you want to get to a spot where you can see all three mimics fairly well and then you can keep a good eye on them try to keep your pets out of the way try to get in the way of some other people and once they are activated here they'll start spitting this thing back and forth to each other you'll see it's an item that goes to them but it'll also pop every time it hits one of them this will help give you clues on where that mimic is going to end up Try to avoid using any of your powers or spells or any other thing that's going to obstruct your view of where these mimics go. Sit here, keep a close eye on them, let them go back and forth and do their thing. And uh, when they are clickable again, you will be able to select the mimic. Another one of those puzzles will be the potion puzzles. What's going to happen is... Uh, somebody's going to drink a potion and they will turn into something. They'll be a certain color and a shape, like an animal shape, but they won't be able to know what they have turned into or whatever ghostly images on them. So somebody else in the group needs to tell them what they are. Once they know what they are, then they can go to the platform around them. Then you can see the, uh, the illusion images. So if you drink a potion, you can see the images around um, and then your party member should tell you where to go. Generally, uh, colors are used for this. Uh, sometimes people call out the actual animal. Either one works because all of the animals and the colors always match up. You just need to know where to go. This one, you can even make some mistakes because if you go to the wrong one, it just kind of pops you off and you got to try again. So when you move over to the right one, just make sure you go on that without walking on any other platforms. You should be good to go. This is a quick and easy puzzle. If you don't know what you're doing, just jump out of the way. If you want to help, go ahead and uh, drink a potion, but make sure that you kind of do it in order so we don't get confused on who's what animal or who's what color. So you can see we're kind of cycling through here. 
get our animals taken care of, then we will move on with the quest. Then you have the artifact puzzle, which is kind of a pain, and every group I've ever been in just skips on by it. However, if you want to try to solve it, I'll try to remember to throw a link in the uh, description of this so you can hunt that one down. So what happens if you do skip by a puzzle? I'm about to tell you. One of three random failed puzzle trap things will happen to you. Let's check out the first one. <laughs> I knew I'd get you with that one! Well, the first of these is the easiest of these, is just a bunch of undead things you have to kill. In a hallway where you gotta kill, was it three or four large groups of undead? Just charge on through, smash it all, and get to the ladder, and you're on to the next section of the quest. <laughs> I knew I'd get you with that one! All right, so now on this one, you have the tunnel collapse, and what you have to do is pick up rocks from the collapse and take them over to a pile that's kind of opposite of the hallway of this. You can see that uh, he's carrying one there. You kind of have to just find your spot, grab one, then you slowly take it over to this other side. This one is particularly boring, um, but you don't have to worry about dying, I guess. So this one throws you into a teleporting room, and is what you're going to want to do is run through the over the pads that don't have the faces on them. So they're kind of tedious too, but as they're discovered, the teleporter areas appear. You can see those with green faces. Don't cut the corner like I just did, or it will send you back. Go right to the middle, stay in the middle, and uh, you can just make your way on through. Use a leapfrog technique, and your group should have no problem making it through this. Eventually, you'll see that there is a path that goes through these, as you have a couple rooms here full of them. Just make your way around, and then you can hit the ladder. Alright, this next section is pretty straightforward. You want to clear everything. There's a few more of these uh, guys that eliminate one of your party members, so make sure to keep them alive and pick out the uh, mobs quickly. One trick here is to make sure that you stay together as a group. It's easy to kind of get spread out and split up. And if that happens, then these mobs will take you out pretty quickly. But stick together, run around the room, clear everything out. You'll notice that each of these big groups, there is a, a tome or book there that you can read. This will give you clues on what the artifacts do before you head into the next box, which is going to be uh, Orchids. So each of these books will give you clues on what you need to do for which artifacts you're grabbing for this next fight, for the next boss fight. And let me tell you what those are going to be real quick. Those clues relate to these three artifacts. The one on the left will give you temporary hit points, almost 2,000 worth of extra, 2,000 percent extra hit points, but you cannot be healed. The one in the middle will give you the ability to do more damage to the zombies that will spawn, but less to Orcus. And then the most important one, the one on the right, the Orcus statue, you deal more damage to Orcus. So make sure somebody with a high DPS gets the Orcus one. Make sure somebody who's maybe doing crowd control or an off tank gets the zombie one. And then a tank should probably also get the 10 hit points since they'll be able to suck up more damage. Once you have those decided, on the last pickup, you will head in. This too was built to honor death. But its many local visages may not be familiar to you. Let me find a more appropriate depiction of death to suit you. So Orcus here, the boss or avatar of Orcus, has the same attacks and everything else as the Orcus in Cien, um, but is weaker. Those attacks are weaker, but this boss has more hit points. So jump into your roles, start fighting him, keep an eye out for his tells like that one, slamming. 
Uh, he hits people with his uh, scepter. If you're not the tank, stay away from his front side. And then the other thing that he does there is his blast back to uh, get you into the pool on the outside where the uh, zombies come from. This is a battle of attrition. High DPS is important, uh, but keep an eye on, on things. Be able to beat him without much trouble. All right, the other mechanic that comes into play is when that green sphere appears, the person with the temporary hit points needs to go grab that, because it will insta-kill anybody else, but if you have the temporary hit points, you can intercept the green orb. This is a good opportunity to see what kind of DPS you have, because the temporary hit points person will end up running out of hit points if they have to keep intercepting that for half an hour. So just stay away from it if you don't have the temporary hit points. If you do, make sure you go and take care of that orb and bring the pain to Orcus. Keep an eye out, because uh, after Orcus drops, you might have a little bit of fighting, and then you'll see the portal open up and want to leave, but Orcus actually does drop some stuff, so uh, you don't want to miss out on that. All right, let's head into the next section. You should feel honored. Only a rarefied few have ever made it this far. This next floor is home to some of my favorite pets. I think they'll take very kindly to some fresh visitors. This room has a bunch of undead in it and an undead necromancer, so make sure you chase him around and take out that necromancer as soon as possible, otherwise you might find yourself fighting way more undead in here than is necessary. Here you'll find another randomized trap room. So go ahead and head on in there and take care of it. But we'll all skip on by since I've already been over the different trap rooms here. I need to punish my servants who built that trap. It's been a while since you last saw the sun. Do you miss it? I the inhabitants of this room do. As you head into this room, hey, hug the left-hand side, and you can sometimes avoid getting that demi lich to spawn. Otherwise, plant yourself in the middle, throw all your buffs down, and make sure you bring mobs to the center, and don't chase them around the room, because you can easily get split up and die. But should be pretty easy for most groups. Descending another level. Perhaps I made this too easy for you. No matter. No one has ever succeeded in overcoming this next floor. I expect your soul to be mine shortly. So we're heading into the next randomized trap section. Uh, we'll skip on by this so you can get to the next boss. Show me who to kill. No, you cannot possibly have completed that. You're not supposed to be here. Perhaps getting a glimpse behind the scenes will help you appreciate the work that has gone into this tomb. Alright, so uh, clear out all the stuff that's behind the scenes here. Try to stick together as a group and clear these things out. There are three different sets and there's one set you can sort of skip by, but the end area won't open up until all three of the groups are killed. Enter, company of Have you fools. enjoyed the draft so, so eager far. for death? Let me introduce you to their creator. He's been looking for test subjects for his newest ideas. 
I have long awaited for a suitable test subject for my most recent design. All right, everybody should move up right in front of the wither here. Stay in a tight group. Who could have get that? Careful! These devices are fragile. Throw out all your best AE protections. Keep everybody grouped. Use sanctuary, and you can just fight through these traps. Your feeble minds cannot comprehend the damage you have caused. If you're having trouble actually living through these traps, you can send one or two out to the sides and kill the dwarves no, no. that are activating these Just traps. Never. A favorite recipe of mine. A room of water and at a touch of electricity. That's the cue for the most dangerous of traps. So make sure you throw your sanctuary up there. You keep everybody healed while that trap is going. Um, but if you're having trouble getting through this one, it's probably unlikely you're going to make it through the final boss. Clear out this last little leg here, and you will be heading into the boss area. You don't have to kill these doors when you come through, and you don't have to kill any of the doors in the entire dungeon. And if you don't, you can actually get a new lore entry. However, if you end up wiping or dying in the final boss, there's a bug sometimes that kicks you back to a previous campfire, not this campfire next to the boss. Then you'll have to fight your way through them. So kind of up to you on uh, what you need to do. And if somebody gets, dies in an earlier area, they can run through everything, but those doors then will be aggro. Before you head in, make sure that uh, you are completely buffed, you have the right companions out, and that everybody knows what roles are playing. If you have new people in here, go through some of the st strategies and tactics. My might has grown, adventurer! I won't you be probably this recognize time. this tomb's newest inhabitant. I've enjoyed playing you. I hope you will as well. So you see it's the boss from the weekly, which has the same attacks, does mostly the same things. So you want to keep an eye on for that. The trick, though, is to this is that everybody is fighting on this platform that's floating through the uh, Temple of the Nine Gods here. There is a pattern to his attacks that you can see. Raises his sword up high for a big chop to a single tank, then holds it behind him, does a sweep on everybody. For the most part, everybody should hang out in the center, keep buffed, keep healed. When he moves, try to stay out of his AEs if possible, and then watch for adds. Keep an eye out for the big circular AE. He'll do this attack and then generally souls will appear. Once that happens, you want to make sure you take those out quickly because they'll charge that soul mongering bar, which will superpower one of the attacks that will happen later in here. It has a huge tell, but as that charges up, as it gets worse, the party is more likely, likely to be wiped. So you see some souls have popped up there in the background, which they are fighting. See how that ghost pops up on one side? Move to the opposite edge and you won't get blasted off. But as Nazi is there, once the push happens, meet back in the center. Keep all of your AE and protection spells happening right in the middle, and everybody should be, live, be able to live through the damage. There's the cue for the super attack, get in the middle, throw up your shields, heal, push through this part. This is where your parties usually wipe, but once you get through, just go ahead and get back into your rhythm. This group had some pretty good DPS, so we didn't get to the second round of that, but uh, it can keep on coming back until he dies. What supernatural strength do you mortals command? Ross. No! No! I find your performance unsatisfactory. No! My secrets remain safe at the heart of this pool. 
try to reach them, and I will ensure you fail at that endeavor. All right, well, there you have it. There's a run through the Tomb of the Nine Gods and all the strategies you're going to need to get there. Now, depending on your class, depending on your build, depending on your party makeup, you'll have to tweak those a little bit. But those are the obstacles you'll have to go through to uh, get this dungeon taken care of. You're definitely going to want to learn to master this and learn to work with others to get this thing done because this is where you're going to be able to get the uh, ultimate ultimate stones so to get your 13th and 14th level or rank enchantments. Also, this is where you're going to get the seals for this campaign so you can buy the gear that comes from this campaign, which is currently the best in the game. Um, you can actually get these pretty quickly if you focus on it. Just make sure that you get your buy your keys from the campaign so you can open this uh, extra chest here at the end. And even if you run out, you get all these rings, some other gear that you can get for your uh, companions. As well as, like I said, you're going to need to run this a bunch so you can get your stones, so you can get the highest ranked enchantments. All right, well, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, throw me a subscribe, become a patron, which that support is really helpful, or follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you have any suggestions for tips, tricks, ways you can uh, make this quest easier, please post them below. I'm sure there's stuff I've missed. I'm sure there's new tactics and strategies people will figure out, and those will help anybody and everybody that's trying to get in here and rock this quest. All right, well, until next time, play smarter, not harder.